Hello, my name is Tim Doné. I am the chair of the Department of Global Studies at Wilfrid Laurier University in uh, Waterloo, Ontario. That's a very difficult and challenging question, and it's easy, I think, to be a pessimist when it comes to questions of, of world peace. We see conflict and war on our TV screens almost daily. We're all aware of the civil war that's taking place in Syria. Uh, and as I speak, the world is watching and worrying about the situation in the Ukraine and whether there will be a war there as well. Over the longer term, I think, though, that uh, the trends offer more reason for optimism. Uh, wars between states have been on the decline for a number of decades now, uh, and in many parts of the world, including our own, uh, the prospect of two neighboring states going to war against each other has become almost unthinkable. It's also the case that wars within states, civil wars, such as the one uh, ongoing in Syria right now, are also on the decline. Uh, there are still too many civil wars and they still take a terrible toll in terms of human suffering. Uh, but over the course of the past 30 years or so since the end of the Cold War, uh, the downward trend in terms of numbers of civil wars is, is unmistakable. The second reason for optimism is that economic development is happening. Uh, and it's happening even in some of the poorer countries of the world that are most susceptible to conflict. Uh, and this is undoubtedly good news, uh, the fact that hundreds of millions of people have been lifted out of extreme poverty, uh, largely because there's, there is a relationship between uh, more development be equaling less war. So the fact that people are, are moving in forward in terms of economic development is a positive sign in terms of, in terms of uh, a world without war eventually. A third reason, I think, for optimism is that the broader international community, uh, and the UN in particular, has moved towards taking questions of peace, of conflict prevention, uh, of peacekeeping, and of peacebuilding more seriously in recent decades. So we've had moves like the development of the UN Peacebuilding Commission, uh, which will be essential in uh, the future if we are to move towards a world without conflict. We don't, we don't, we're not close, I don't think, in terms of having all the answers yet to, to some of these questions, but certainly putting in place some of these institutions uh, is a positive sign. So that's the good news. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we still live in a world where the world and the governments of the world spend far too much money on preparing for war and far too little preparing for peace. Uh, for every dollar that the world's government spend on the UN peacebuilding fund, for example, they spend nearly three thousand uh, dollars on their own militaries. And we'll have to do much better than that if we are to move to a world without war. As well, we still live in a world in which there is still far too much injustice, far too much inequality, and far too much poverty. Uh, nearly 1.4 billion people uh, continue to live in extreme poverty. Uh, and too many live in situations where they can only dream of things like enjoying human rights or democracy. And these are the kind of situations in which desperate people are forced in some ways to take up arms uh, in order to try to further their, their, in order to try to better their lives. So my answer to the question ultimately, could there be world peace, is yes, absolutely there could be world peace. We still have some work to do, however, in order to get there. Thank you.